What's going on, guys? JT, I am the Ty, coming at you with another part of Mega Man X The Let's Play. Anyway, uh, for anybody who's actually watching this, I thank you guys for actually tuning in. I'm really, really glad you enjoyed this LP, but obviously, um, we're going to tackle two levels today. Um, haven't picked this up in kind of a while, but this is going to be Armored Armadillo, and this level is actually really, really cool if you guys are interested in getting extra life at some point, and if you want to get the, uh, the Hadouken Fire Blast. Oh, crap, there was a... There was a one-up over there, and I missed it. But if you want to fill up your sub tank, this is actually the prime place to do it in the entire game. There's this really big bat over here, and she shoot her, she normally always gives you the one up like that. And normally, um, the way that I find that always gets me the one up is if I shoot her with like the semi big ball, like yeah, the green one that you create. And if I shoot her with the green one, she normally always gives me a one up. But if you want to fill up your sub tank, just keep on killing the bats. For some reason, they spawn a lot of light for no reason at all, and I don't know why. But um, there's lots of cool things in this level. Armored Armadillo is actually kind of a tough character if you don't have the uh, if you don't have the electric spark from Spark Mandrill. So I do suggest if you guys are kind of having a hard time with them that you do beat that person first. Um, like the name implies, he has armor on him, you know. But uh, anyway, um, things going on in my life right now because I feel like that's what you're supposed to do when you talk about an LP, is right? Ah. Uh, now there is a little secret right here. Um, what I like to do is kind of slide down and get this guy started. And then kind of move up. If you get hit by the by that stuff at the very beginning, he will kill you. But if you go backwards, I think there's another sub tank right behind him. So go ahead and finish him off. And um, here we go. There's another sub tank. <laughs> but life is crazy busy right now. I'm gonna be completely moved out of this house by uh, by Wednesday of next week, which is crazy. Then um, and then my class is gonna end by next Thursday. And then um. Obviously, it's just taking mock tests and then actually signing up for the actual MCAT. So obviously, um, I've been really, really busy. Um, I haven't put a Wi-Fi match in a, up in a long time, and I've been feeling really guilty because my um, whenever my sub number increases by a little bit and I don't have a Wi-Fi match up, and it's because people like the uh, the Wi-Fi battle, then I feel really guilty. Uh, I don't know what it is, but um, I have a team in the works right now. I was actually thinking about doing a. Uh, like one of those team tutorial, like a team building process, because just to show you like the thought process that goes through my head, um, I don't know if that's really useful. I know a lot of you guys are actually pretty good, but uh, a lot of people tend to ask me about that for some reason. I don't know why they ask me, but <laughs> I guess they think that I'm really, really pro. I do think I, I enjoy the game, and um, I have I can predict people pretty well. Um, obviously, um, the number one thing that I always try to tell people is just to... Uh, to know how you like to play the game, um, a lot of people like to play um, really, really offensively. Um, I tend to play more bulky offense because I'm a lot better at telling what people are going to do. Like, um, I I play defense a lot better, as you say. So uh, anyway, you gotta kill this guy off. It's really, really important that you do kill this one off. And um, I kind of wasted a lot of fire right there, but uh, if you kill him off, if you go over here, then um, you'll be able to get the heart. Obviously, it can be really hard to reach it. If you do not have, uh, you didn't kill him in time, so like, having the fire wave in this level is actually really, really useful. But um, if you want to get the Hadouken in this level, it's actually really, really important. Um, I will do like a separate video explaining how to get the Hadouken for you guys who are really curious. It's actually, um, it's actually really, really cool. I like it a whole bunch. And um, obviously, um, this game is kind of lagging, but even when I played it on the console, it tends to do that a lot. Basically, um, if you go up here, this is where you're going to need to get the Hadouken. Um, it's kind of a process. You get to have all the heart containers, all the sub tanks, um, stuff like that. Now, I can beat this guy normally. Because obviously, this is an armored armadillo. And the question is, do you guys want me to beat him normally or beat him with the electric spark? I will start off playing him normally just to show you guys how to actually do it. But basically, um, you just kind of dodge him the whole time. And then you hit him like that. That's the only time he's really available. But see, it only took away, like, one. It's actually really, really bad. And obviously, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of damage if you're not careful. So basically, you just kind of wait, and then you hit him with the electric spark, and that will actually take off his shield, which is actually pretty useful. And um, I think I played this cautiously. Once you take off the shield, he's actually really easy to beat. So you just hit him like that. And um, the pattern's pretty simple. So uh, actually, if you feel really, really ballsy, you can go down there. I think those balls don't actually hurt nearly as much as the other ones. So. Gotta keep that in mind. Oh, oh, I didn't expect him to actually spin into me. I thought he was gonna bounce. If I die, then I'm gonna feel extremely stupid. <laughs> but yeah, he takes away a lot of health, so he's actually used to give me a lot of trouble when I was a little kid, so just something to be kind of careful about. Um, obviously, having electric spark really helped the process out, because now we're pretty much even. 
Um, I can't really say that we would have been even before, because he was kind of wrecking me, but, uh... Obviously, yeah, just go ahead and finish him off like this. Um, just kind of take your time, hit him once. Yeah, you know, I'm shooting more than one. Um, really doesn't benefit you all that much, so... Um, there you go, that is the, uh, the boss. I should have beat him normally, but, um, obviously, yeah, it seemed like I was kind of struggling, and he only took away one life. So he's actually very, very defensive. He, he's like the equivalent of a physical wall in Pokemon, you should say. So, uh, that's, uh, that's Armored Armadillo. He's pretty simple if you have Electric Spark, and he's a pain in the ass if you don't. So, uh, this is the code. If you guys want to keep up with me, obviously we picked up the sub tank, and we picked up the heart container there, and he gives you rolling shield, and you gotta wear this stupid, uh, pink color. I, I don't know what's up with that, but rolling shield's actually pretty cool, so... Here's the code for that, and um, we're going to tackle one more stage today, because that's what I feel like doing. Um, we're going to tackle Launch Octopus. I think Launch Octopus is actually a pretty cool level. Um, I don't remember if he has a sub tank. I don't think he has a sub tank in this level, but I'll check. But um, I forget what the backstory is to all these different guys, but I've never really explained to you guys the Mega Man X, um, the background for this. So basically, um, for those of you who are kind of new to the entire series, um, Mega Man X takes place in the year 21XX, so it's about time when... Uh, you know, when your your kids' kids are gonna have kids or something like I should say. So it's a little bit in the future, back when they have more, I guess, like robot people or something. And basically, what happened was that before, um, you know, there's normally a feud between um, Doctor Light and Doctor Wily, which is the main premise behind all the original Nintendo Mega Man games. And um, apparently, I'm getting attacked by Seedra here. This is weird. And then obviously. It's like and I have to time it and then kind of go through here. Um, there is like five, there's a guy over here that I completely forgot about. He's like kind of a pain in the butt. So let's see where he is. Here we go. Basically, you just have to put your way around and then kind of move past him. But the story is take place in the year 21XX. Um, before Dr. Light died, he created um, pretty much what he thought was the ultimate robot. Um, and he named him X for like exponential or like infinite potential. I think that's what his name was for. Ooh, that gave me a lot of stuff. That's cool. Now, I forget if there's like a really good weapon to use against the guy, but I will. Um, I'll go ahead and use one of those. Anyway, don't get caught in these guys. They're actually really, really bad. Now here's the other guy, and this is actually a much more of a pain than the original one. Because if he blows you into the spikes, then you die, so you gotta have to be kinda careful. Um, I forget if this is faster than killing him. Oh crap. So obviously you gotta keep on, uh, I just kinda like jump like that, obviously, uh, just kind of avoid the spikes. You fall on the spikes and you gotta redo it, and um, that really, really sucks. Oh. Just kinda play cautiously. I don't think the storm really does all that much, so... Let's just switch back to my original thing. Yeah, I don't think the storm's doing all that much. Oh, I guess it did a lot more than I expected. There you go. You killed him already. Anyway, if you stay on this thing for a while, eventually it should respawn a little whirlpool. You can go ahead and jump up here. I think there's life up here. So, go ahead and grab that if you kind of need it. Um, obviously, I just don't mind filling up the sub tanks. They're really good. But anyway, back to the story. Year 21XX. Dr. Wily, Dr. Light feud. Um, he created Mega Man X, obviously. His ultimate, um, ultimate person. Um, basically, if you guys don't know what, I, what Asimov's laws of robotics are, um, it's like the laws, the laws basically state that a robot cannot harm a human, um, a robot cannot, um, purposely, like, destroy another human or, like, himself in the, into a position to hurt someone. Obviously, he can't self-destruct himself, and he just has to, um, he has to be a good citizen, so basically what Dr. Light did is he created a robot that, uh, that doesn't need to follow these set laws. They can, he can actually, um, he has a moral compass to think for himself, and that's what X is. But the problem is that he doesn't know um, X's potential, and he's actually really, really worried. So he, um, he put him into years of testing, obviously, for a huge chunk of time. And if you keep on shooting this guy, eventually he will die. Um, normally what I like to do is you stay right here on the pillar, um, you will always land safely on something. And just let him come back down to you. Um, and he's actually making a really weird noise. I don't know if you hear that. He never makes that noise normally. But anyway, you like the tail to land perfectly around this area. Yeah, that, that worked out really, really nicely. And he didn't give me anything. That sucks. But if you go over here, then um, this is the heart container. But he put Mega Man X in the storage for like 30 years to run diagnostic tests. And Mega Man X got discovered by... Um, 
by a professor called Dr. Kane, who um, realized that this, uh, this advanced robotic machinery could be really useful for like the greater good of mankind. So basically what he did is he took Mega Man X's design, um, made a whole bunch of robots just kind of like him, and that's kind of the premise for how the game went around. Obviously, um, he didn't do a very good job, or like the robots started going maverick. Um, the reason why they go maverick is actually really, really interesting. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. But for those of you who know who Zero is, he's actually, um, he's not who he says he is, or he's not. I, I guess like how the, um, how that football coach would say, he's like they, he is not, or they are not who we thought they were, or something like that. <laughs> I think that's an accurate way to describe Zero, but uh. That's all I gotta say on the, on that particular subject as to why someone went Maverick. But obviously, we're fighting someone named Sigma. Um, Sigma is actually one of the one of the greater creations of Dr. Kane. Um, he used to be a Maverick, or they, what they call or they call them Maverick Hunters. And what they basically do is they hunt down robots that go Maverick. And basically, what happened to Sigma? He was the leader of these hunters, and he ended up going Maverick himself. So now Zero is the leader of the Maverick Hunters, and uh, Mega Man X is like a Class B hunter. But apparently, um. They think that he has more potential than all of them combined, and for good reason, because he's the original design, you know? But, uh, here we go. Here's the boss. This boss is weak to rolling shield, which is why I chose to fight him now. Um, he's actually kind of a pain in the ass if you don't have rolling shield either. I think most of the bosses in this game are actually pretty tough if you don't have a rolling shield. That or I just, I really, really suck and I haven't played it in a long time. Um, obviously, if you guys have t uh, a lot of trouble, they tend to cause a lot of damage. Like, I'm getting completely harassed here, but basically what you want to do is you want to avoid this little this twirling thing, because if, if he traps you in that, then uh, he can take away a lot of health. But if you keep your distance, then um, he won't harass you with those stupid uh, with those stupid things every single time. So we're drawing neck and neck. I'm going to try not to use an E-Tank. This is going to be pretty tough. There you go. One more shot to kill him. Oh, I'm out. Whoa, crap. I am not gonna die to this guy. That is a waste. Of, that is a waste of life. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Here we go. Let's finish him off that way. Oh, that was terrible. But anyway, uh, that's launch octopus. Obviously, rolling shield extremely useful, and you tend to waste it because he shoots up this stupid homing thing. Um, you can put up the shield, but if you run into him, then um, you can't shoot the rolling shield at him anymore, and it really doesn't serve that much of a purpose. But, um, I don't know if I explained the story all that well, because I was kind of scatterbrained. But, um, if you guys have questions about the story, I can elaborate more and actually make a video on that. But, uh, he gives you a homing torpedo. That's actually a really, really cool weapon. And, um, you get a really cool gray color. I don't know what else to tell you guys. But anyway, um, that is... Those are the two levels we're going to do today. This is the code, if you guys are playing alongside me. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely click that like button if you did. Next time we pick up, we will do a uh, Boomer Kawanger's level, and we will do Sting Chameleon, and that will wrap up the eight bosses of this game. So, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll catch you another time. Bye.